Hello, everybody. You may wonder why we're looking at <clears throat> Empire of the Sun. And uh, primarily, it's because uh, I'm going to, be, going to be participating in a uh, tournament that has, I think, either 16 or 32 players or something like that. And we're playing the 1943 three-turn scenario. And the victory uh, conditions are that... And so I've never played this game before. And in fact, I've only read the rules, just kind of skimmed over them a little bit and haven't really had got into a, a detailed assessment of it for a variety of reasons. Uh, the, I think the important thing for me to appreciate, first of all, before we even get into the rules mechanics of how to do various uh, things in the game, moving and combat and playing cards. It, it's a, you all know the game. It's a card-driven game, right? Designed by Mark Herman. And sorry about my voice. I've got a croaky kind of post-bronchial infection thing going on. So it's a little bit croaky. <clears throat> and I'm sucking on a icy pole. So... Uh, before you do any of that stuff, I think with a, a game like this, we want to look at what the victory conditions are and where the locations of those victory conditions are and what the what might influence the game. And so uh, the idea here is that we want to try and look uh, that, first of all, know that uh, for Japan to win, for instance, they need to earn six victory points or more. For the Americans to win, they need Japan to earn five victory points or less. Uh, so that would give you the bare minimum of a victory. And since all that matters in the tournament is not how much you win by, really, but uh, the, the fact that you win and then you move through the next round. So the, Ger the Germans and <laughs> the Japanese start out with three victory points. And they can earn victory points in a variety of ways. They can, they already own the victory points for controlling what's called the Australian Mandate, which is really boils down to uh, Rabul and Guadalcanal. But as we'll see on the other map over here in a second, uh, Guadalcanal has already been lost, but it does not detract from the victory point total until Rabul is lost as well. So that's important to keep in mind. Uh, you can certainly accrue victory points by reducing the political will of the U.S. forces. And for every point below a certain threshold, you will lose a victory point for the Japanese. And that's a bad thing, right? Uh, if, we're playing, if we're playing the Japanese. And for the U.S., clearly, every time... Uh, is it right? Minus one victory point, sorry, we will add one victory point to the Japanese. Uh, as we would decrease the political will for the Allies, obviously, uh, that's a bad thing for them. And we, and every time we get below uh, one below a certain f threshold and we keep going down below that threshold, you will pick up a victory point for each time. Uh, you can pick up three victory points for reducing and capturing northern India, which is those five hexes. You can pick up five victory points for consolidating and capturing all of China. And uh, then you're really limited to uh, inflicting losses, I believe. And that's really it in terms of being able to gain victory points. Now, you can also lose victory points by losing the... Uh, by having a... letting the enemy have forces inside this... This 11 hex range, which is basically these islands here, the Marianas, uh, you'll lose three victory points if there's a unit in supply in any one of these. You'll lose three victory points if you uh, let the Marshall Islands fall to US control, and there's a certain number of hexes that matter to that. You would also lose three victory points if you, if you lost this here, as the Japanese play. And these are also Japanese uh, reductions in victory points. Now, there are victory points if you can capture uh, Oahu or one of the other islands over here somewhere. So that, that, can, that can have an influence as well. But that looks like a pretty far-fetched effort in 43. Who knows? Um, right. So that's kind of the, 
when I look at this map and I think, okay, what are some of the things that have to happen? The, the, as the Japanese player, clearly I need to make sure that I don't lose either of these two locations. That I try and hold on to my three victory points for this area, which I imagine will be very difficult trying to keep Raul, uh, Rabul, sorry. And uh, that they would be the priorities. If you can make it, I think you make if you can make an early strike somewhere and pick up extra victory points or kill units, then by all means. But you're going to have to spend a certain amount of effort making sure that you don't lose VPs in the south here because you have nine at risk here. And really only eight available to be picked up here. And I think this would be very expensive to try and pick up the three VPs. For instance here, or trying to have a China offensive. And I don't know exactly how uh, China falls because it's, it's driven by uh, one of these little status charts. And once you get to government collapses, then, then the government collapses and you get the VPs. Right, so let's move over to the map. Sorry for the squeaky chair. Now, I've kind of got the map. You may look at the map and go, well, where are the units? Well, each large white uh, cube is a control hex. And it's also a... There may also be units in those hexes as well, but it's certainly a control hex. And wherever there are yellow... Uh, blocks is there will be full strength units either air navy or army and red indicate reduced units so it's kind of giving us a look into where our forces are without worrying about count factor counting and things like that control hexes for the allies and blue blue cubes are representing allied forces right so at the outset of the game, we have a we're in the midst of a fiercely contested battle for the Australian mandate. We have reduced forces and some strength, uh, fairly strong forces, by the looks of it, protecting the Marshall Islands. Uh, this is a control point without any units in it, and you can probably hear vacuum going in the background. That's awesome, isn't it? Anyway, with, with, this, with this view of the map and the other, you know, the, the regions over here are for control, what I'm hoping to do is try and come up with some sort of basic plan for both sides so that in the tournament I can look at this and go, I go okay, it's 1943. What am I going to try and do? What, what's my focal point going to be as the Japanese or as the Allies or whatever the case may be? And how am I going to accrue three victory points? Or how am I going to reduce the, or make sure the, uh, the Japanese don't accrue an additional three victory points? That's really what it boils down to, right? So, <clears throat> there are two, there are a couple of key areas. Clearly, taking control of Rabul would be a quick way to reduce the Japanese player to zero victory points if they're starting, if they're starting at three. The second would be, as the Allied player, to conquer the Marshall Islands and reduce that. That would be a net minus six, which would reduce the Japanese player to you know, basically minus three victory points. In the meantime, as the allies, you're gonna make have to make sure that you don't give up the northern Indian section of the map or lose China, because that's a cumulative eight victory points, which arguably, even if you lost those, but managed to knock these out, you would still keep Japan to the three victory point level or thereabouts, excluding unit losses and things like that. So there's an interesting dichotomy there. 
could you abandon, as the Allies, could you abandon this area or just play a holding game and not reinforce it while you put a full bore effort into the Marshall Islands and the Australian Mandate? In the, mean, in the meantime, if you've got enough operations capacity, can you force one hex here? Can you drive this way, obtain, capture a port here and an airfield and be within range of Japan and pick up additional victory points, so another three victory points, really driving the spike into the Japanese defeat? I don't know. As a Japanese player, you, you tend to have fairly limited options. You can play a defensive game I think, and clearly try and keep Rabul and put all your eggs in, into this basket. You can look for opportunities to kill units. You can certainly have to defend these two sections of the map. Can't really afford to lose them unless you go whole hog and say, I'm going to draw the line here, which might be a defensible line to support assuming you could keep truck, because I think truck is probably a good launching pad to try to attack into this set of islands, I'm not sure, into the Marianas. We have to have a, an assessment of that. Certainly can't afford to lose too much more than Rabul, otherwise we start to lose resources. And the reason why I'm suggesting that this would be okay to lose this is if you then went whole hog, knocked out China and Northern India, picked up the eight VPs, that gives you a two victory point buffer to allow the, the uh, allies to capture this area if, if you can't hold it and play that game and see, see what comes about. Maybe there are other strategies here, there are other opportunities, I don't know. I'm recording this now so that we can kind of look back after the first game that I play uh, in the tournament, uh, or maybe after the second game, and see if any of those things actually kind of all add up together to give us a. Uh, uh, if any of those, any of these points discussed, end up giving us a, a viable strategy and, and a winning, a winning approach to the game. All right, twelve minutes. Let's leave it at that. Talk to you soon.